even with all of that, nobody knew what I was going through. Yeah, you were hiding you know? in sight. Exactly, exactly. We're in the car, my cell phone rings, and I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? And then I start screaming. And she was like, Charmony, what is wrong with you? Should I pull over? So she pulls over. Now my kids are in the back seat. And I'm literally like, oh my God. Like, literally, I could not speak. Mm -hmm. The person on that phone was my daughter. <gasps> oh my she God. She says, I think you're my mom. Oh my God. And that's amazing because your mom loves to bake and she's super crafty and all of that. Yes, it, it's so funny how like we're literally before and after kids. Like yeah. <laughs> we're practically the same person. I know. And I'm, when I, she sent me the photo, she's like, I was like, can I see a photo? And you guys are like twins. Yes. And if you see my little, my baby brother, we're like triplets because we put all three of us together except he's six two. Oh my God, that is crazy. So I, she told me her story and I would love to hear your story, your side of um, all of it. All of the great things that I did, all of the awards that I did, and the concerts that I was in, my dad was never in the audience. Mm. You know, um, I went to modeling school and I remember my mom had chemo the day before. Mm -hmm. She came to my graduation. Wow. You know, and I remember walking down the runway and seeing her and just the look on her face. Like, that is my fondest memory of my mom. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't have cancer, but, you know, like my best friend has cancer. She tells me how she was after chemo. I remember my mom telling me that chemo. But you showed up for me. Yeah. Like, despite however bad you felt that day, yeah. you showed up for me. You know, and that. Again, I hold that near because my dad wasn't there. I didn't have the money that my parents had. Um, so as far as they were, uh, you know, they lived in Queens most of their lives. When we moved to Houston, it was a cultural shock bigger for my son because in New York, he went to an all boys school, mm -hmm. you know, all black and Spanish people school mm -hmm. to come to Houston. And not only do you have girls in your school now, you have all different races in your school. Mm -hmm. And you come from the North to the South, it is a huge cultural difference, like absolutely huge cultural difference. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of harder um, for him to adjust. Mm -hmm. um, I don't regret that move because, you know, my daughter was going through stuff in New York. You know, she went to a, spe a special high school for arts and whatever they call it. And she just didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, although, you know, this is what you do. You're a creator and this is the school they sent you to. She just didn't fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, so she's cutting schools. She's, you know, doing stuff that she shouldn't be doing. My next door neighbor happens to be a truancy officer and stops mm -hmm. me one day and says, hey, you know, I was supposed to pick up your daughter the other day, but I didn't. I wanted you to know. I'm like, what? So she tells me, you know, how my daughter's cutting school, blah, blah, blah whatever. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter and I have a conversation and she's like, I just want to leave New York. Mm -hmm. I told her, spin the map. Wherever your finger lands, that's where we're gonna go. Really? She wanted wow. to go to yeah. She wanted to go to Virginia, um, because her friend went to an all girls school in Virginia. I was like, ah, I'm not really feeling Virginia. So, whatever the time span, I get a call from my brother, and he's telling me that you know he has colon cancer and he's here in Houston. So I was like, I'm coming to Houston. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah, that was it. Word it out. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think it through. Mm -hmm. So. You know, God gives you confirmation on stuff. Yeah. We're in service one Sunday and Bishop talks about the three sixes, but not in the negative, you know, um, concept. Mm -hmm. He's like, I, I think it was like six months, six weeks, six years, you know, you're going to, things are going to happen, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So he had prophesied at the end of the service, he prophesied that to me mm -hmm. about, you know, something big is going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Six weeks later, we were in Houston. <gasps> really? For real, just wow, just like that, wow. just like that. When we left service that night, I was talking to my sister in a car on the way home, and I was like, you know, I'm thinking about going to Houston. Let go, mm -hmm. like not just, just go, pack up yeah. and go. Yeah, I don't re again. I don't regret it. It was the best thing for my kids. My daughter, we got here, like I said, she's cutting school. You know, honor roll student. Wow, she did student government. Mm -hmm. She played sports. Mm -hmm. um after school activities like she was a student she became a student mm. such a, a a turnaround yeah. that as a parent that sacrifice because yeah. wait let me bring it back when we left new york we yeah. left with what we can put on the plane wow 
we came with suitcases. Wow. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow. I sold stuff in my apartment, gave uh, in, the, in the house, gave stuff away. Um, there was a church up the block. I told wow. them to come take whatever you want. That, that's like two And they were looking at me like, what? Person, that's it. it right? And that's what it was. My son stayed behind. He came down at the end of the summer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we literally started wow. all over. From scratch. From scratch. From scratch. I still had my job. You know, the, the company that I worked for. Um, my managing director allowed me to work remote from Houston. Mm -hmm. And then again, because God opens doors, we were in Houston for maybe a month mm -hmm. and they were like, Hey, we have a position here for a manager, you know, wow. Chuck said that you should, we should, you know, put you in the box. Okay. So we move here. I get a promotion, mm -hmm. you know, um, before we left, the church had given us a large sum of money. Mm -hmm. When we got here, I had already found an apartment. So like, Door, God had already opened the doors, yeah. you know, so all of the, the, that, that, um, he was confirming things, you, just you know, and of course, through. right. And it's, it, it's crazy because when I look back at my life, I've always just jumped. Mm -hmm. I've never really thought about stuff. That's why I say God has had his hand over me my entire life when I, mm -hmm. I didn't know, you yeah. know, I didn't know who God was. I didn't, you know, get a relationship with God until I was 15, yeah. you know, and that I owe to, um, my first real boyfriend, mm -hmm. he was like, I can't date you unless you go to church with us. It was for me. You know, yeah. I, everything yeah. happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I've been in Houston now for about, I think, seven years now. Uh, all of my kids are grown on their own. Mm -hmm. um, it's me time. Yeah. You know, I didn't really have much of a childhood. You know, as a parent, I put me on hold yeah. for my kids. Yes, I can you know, totally like, understand people that. Like, People are like, you just packed up and left because of your daughter? Well, that was part, you know, I was part of it. You know, my brother was sick, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and I would not change it. Yeah. I would do, all, do it all over again. Share. So 40s is like freedom to you. Now you're getting like this year is kind of like a transformation for you to spend time with you. Because if you didn't have mm -hmm. that childhood like me, like I've said in my podcast, like to me is 40. Like, I feel like I'm just starting to be me yes I'm starting adult adult life all over again yeah yeah that's and how I feel it, it's 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 funny because I had a conversation with a friend of mine the other day about that and he just turned 50 and I'm like I shouldn't be going through this stuff at this age like I should have already conquered all these things but it's literally a whole new life yeah um yep. and it's adjusting you yep. know it's adjusting you know I I'm grateful um, for all of my past experiences, you know, the, the good times, the bad times, I really have no um, regrets, you know, even with the being molested, I've learned that, and I've learned and accepted that even though I did not know God, he knew what was going on, and he knew how that was going to benefit me later in life, you know, before I left New York, um, the company I, I worked for was working with the Department of Education, and then the manager, because it was a staffing company, I'm sorry, she got an account with the domestic violence unit and mm -hmm. they wanted, you know, IT support or whatever. Yeah. Um, because she knew kind of about my molestation because, um, oh, I didn't tell you the best part. I got to go backwards. Sorry. I knew, anyway, she knew part of it. She was like, mm -hmm. I have a great opportunity for you. Mm -hmm. You know, she was like, what did you, what would you think about working with these women and just coaching them on life skills? Oh, you know, preparing it. them to work. Um, in an office, resume building. Yes, yes. At first, I was like, you know, me being me, I'm like, lady, what? You big <laughs> Italian lady, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I want to share my personal yeah. you know, with these people. Yeah. But the first day that we went, and she introduced me, and she says, despite what Charmonique looks like, she's got a story to tell you guys. And she's going to work with you guys for the next couple of months, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I begin to tell them certain things mm -hmm. and like the tears. And I'm just sitting here like, what? Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. But I realized that at that point, everything that I got, I've gone through was for this moment here. Yes. So work yeah. with these women who, you know, I mean, some of the stories was just like heartbreaking. Yeah. Um, but being able to connect to them. Yes. Yes. And letting them see that despite what you're going through now, 
you can still make it in life exactly and that's you know? the essence of this podcast like every story will help and every story will heal one you know like us just giving that gift of a story to let people know that if mm-hmm. I look fully put together if you look fully put together right. and we went through all of that horrific experience but still be able to make it out and be successful have career woman have kids and be who we are now so can you right 29 2009 mm-hmm. um I was very active in church I um became a leader over a singles ministry mm-hmm. um the young lady that I was working with we were doing trying to do a um conference for singles we're going down to Jones Beach because we wanted to do a luau. Mm-hmm. We're in the car, my cell phone rings, and I'm like, "What? Are you kidding me?" And then I start screaming, and she was like, "Sharmini, what is wrong with you? Should I pull over?" So she pulls over. Now my kids are in the back seat, mm-hmm. and I'm literally like, "Oh my god!" Oh, like literally, I could not speak. Mm-hmm. The person on that phone was my daughter. <gasps> oh my! She god. says. I think you're my mom. Oh my God. What? <laughs> like, oh this God. is a joke. Yeah. Um, she says, I found you in my space. Oh my God. What? Yeah. So we pull over and we're talking. She's like, you know, we exchange numbers or whatever, whatever. I'm like, Nicole, I got to go to my sister's house. Mm-hmm. I call my sister. My brother law answers the phone. I'm like, is Charlene there? He goes, yeah. I said, tell her, don't go anywhere. I'm on my way over. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what's the matter? Like, you know, he's from Queens. He's from the streets. Like, what's up? You know, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Like, you know, do I need um, to get ready? <laughs> <laughs> exactly and when when I got to the house the way I busted the door like and I felt bad because they had company mm-hmm. like their friends is over I busted the door and Chuck jumps up and he's like what I'm ready you know what, what's going on I'm like where's Charlene yeah. he says, she's upstairs I run upstairs he's coming behind Nicole's like Chuck I think you might want to stay here mm-hmm. so my sister's friends they're like well I'm coming upstairs so here we are my sister's bedroom a bunch of women standing in the room mm-hmm. and I'm laughing and crying and laughing and crying um and my sister's like what is wrong with you yeah and I tell her like my daughter just called me oh my god so now the other women they don't really know these are women that I've gone to church with they yeah. don't really know mm. um and I say they don't really know only because and again I have to refer to God in March we were in Virginia Beach at um Marriott Hotel and they had asked me to give my testimony mm-hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> that means I have to be transparent. Like, whoa, yeah. the night before, you know, like I, some of the women, again, they knew. Um, I was talking to Sister Barbara and she, she calls me Shim. She was like, Shim, God will use you. Just let him use you. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, us praying together and, you know, people talk about the Holy Spirit and, you know, um, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. That night, I mean, I tossed and I turned. They talk talk about warring with the spirit. Not necessarily that I was fighting against God, but as he's filling me up, mm-hmm. like it was just so overwhelming. All I could do, I just laid on the floor and I just, I cried. You know, the people coming in and out of the room, praying over me, whatever. By the morning, it's time for me to give my story. And because I am a storyteller, yeah. I told it in, in story form. Mm-hmm. You know, I said to them, you know, life is like a storm. Mm-hmm. you know before it rains you know it's nice it's sunny it's bright and you're you know moving through life and you're just loving every moment of the sun glistening on your body um but now the weather kind of changes it mm-hmm. gets a little cloudy you put on your overcoat you know mm-hmm. you button it up you, you kind of flip the collar up a little bit it starts to drizzle so mm-hmm. you like you know tucking your head down mm-hmm. now the storm comes so you have to pull out your umbrella so you, you know you're holding your umbrella now the wind's coming so now you're fighting with the rain and the wind mm-hmm. that is my life and, you know, they're looking at, and I began to tell them about being molested, molested and having my, my daughter. At the end of the retreat, the end of the conference, we're on our way home. One of the ladies that's in the car says, go find your daughter. And I was like, what? She's like, you should go find her. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't know about it. But again, because God is who he is, mm-hmm. when I went home on my little AOL dial-up, I'm Googling, like, how to find a child. And yeah. I contacted a bunch of different agencies. Now, Again, weeks later, I get this phone call. I think I'm your daughter. Wow. Whew. Okay, so fast forward, we're back in my sister's room. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, you know, my, we, she said to call her so we can meet her, whatever. I love that. It's 
So my sister's like, call her. I'm like, no, you call her. <laughs> um, the other way, it was like, I'll call her. Then like, I'll, like no one wanted to make this phone call. Yeah. So finally, I just dial the call. She answers. My sister takes the phone for me. I am your aunt Charlene, and you know, blah 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 blah. Where do you live? She says, I live in Central Iceland. Girl, wait, it gets better. <laughs> Give us the address. Blah 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 blah. Wilson Boulevard. I was like, Wilson Boulevard. How does that sound so familiar? Girl, she gives us the address. We're getting ready to go in the car. My sister's friend's like, I'm coming. I'm coming with you. So we pack up in, in the car. It's now nighttime. We drive from Queens out to good old CI. Mm -hmm. As we're coming around the corner, I'm like, I know this house. Okay. I call her, tell her that we're outside. I see mm -hmm. her in the window. Um, she comes to the door and I'm just frozen. Mm -hmm. I'm literally looking at me. Like when I tell you she is identical, like before and after, that's mm -hmm. how we look. So wow. I'm literally looking at myself. Yeah. Um, and how her, old is she now? I think she was 22. Wow. Right, yeah, 21, 22. Mm -hmm. So her adoptive mom comes outside. She didn't tell them that she found me nor that she was looking for me. Oh my God. So when we're outside, she's telling them who I am. Mm -hmm. She wasn't so comfortable about the whole meeting thing. Yeah. Um, I remember her bringing me in the house and showing me around and showing me where, you know, my daughter slept and, you know, just give me little tidbits or whatever. Yeah. We decided to go to the diner so we can sit and talk. God is awesome. So I'm like, how did you find me? Yeah. She says, do you know so-and-so? We're all, all of the women were like, yeah, he goes to our church. She goes, that's how I found you. <gasps> she says, I was talking about meeting my mother or whatever. She says, and I started, you know, Googling and well, whatever it was, because it wasn't Googling, yeah. researching or whatever. She says, and when I showed him some pictures, he said, oh, I know her. She teaches Sunday school. Oh my God. And we're all like, <laughs> yeah. she says, I didn't believe him. Yeah. She says, you know, we were going to just show up to your church one day. <gasps> and oh I God. just, you know, I, I, I couldn't do that. Um, mm -hmm. So find out how to, to get in touch with you. You know, mm -hmm. she sent me that that message on my space. I'm looking yeah. at my phone like, what? Yeah. <laughs> this is some jokes and pranks. But when I looked at her pictures, I couldn't deny it if I wanted to. That yeah, would be like, a more COVID show yeah. like, yeah, mm -hmm. you are 99.99% the mother yeah um so the way that we met was just phenomenal wow after that she moved in with me so now okay you had um jordan turk on right mm -hmm. he was my daughter's teacher <laughs> see these Wait, are see these are all the connections right it's all the connections so now we talked about wilson boulevard right mm -hmm. the house that my daughter grew up in Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember uh, Dee Dee and Dion Blue. That sounds, yeah, that sounds familiar, yeah. So how about my daughter was their next door neighbor? I've been over to Blue's house many of times throughout my, my high school years. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they babysat my daughter. Oh my God. Dee Dee used to do my oh. daughter's hair. Oh my God. Like, it's just, it's just that's, wow. That's crazy, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So, um... When my daughter and I talk about putting it on Facebook mm -hmm. and we each put our own version of how we met whatever on Facebook, people were like, I know you do. Wait, let me bring it back even further. Oh my so God. So Mulligan Elementary School, my niece went to Mulligan Elementary School. Yeah. They were classmates. Oh Not my just classmates. They used to joke and say, oh, that's my cousin. No. Here we are at 2010. Wow. And it's like, you really were my cousin, huh? Oh my God. The, the dots are all connected. That, <laughs> like, yeah. Is yeah. Crazy, mind crazy, crazy, mind crazy. Mind. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know how I forgot to say that earlier. But yeah, so that's kind of how I, I want that story ended, but that's how we met. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time going into Bayshore Mall where I thought I saw her. <gasps> I'm walking in, she's coming out with this yeah. lady. Yeah. And I'm looking like, that little girl looks like me. <laughs> that could have been it. That could have been so, it. So, yeah. you know, her mom was a teacher in CI school district. She was asking people about the girl that got pregnant. Oh. Who was the girl that got pregnant in Reed? Really? Who was the girl? Yeah. 
nobody again nobody knew yeah and because the records were sealed there was but so much information she can find out yeah she never told me how she thought it was me mm -hmm. but remember i was in the marching band yeah. she says i used to come to the parades just to see who you were really um dd had found out and you know we were talking dd was like i remember her asking me questions wow. she goes but i didn't i didn't know she they didn't know I, I didn't know that you were pregnant yeah you know so just it's it, again you talk about the dots when i say god was all over this like mm -hmm. completely all over this when um my daughter went to see our high school mm -hmm. in the music department i was whatever the music whatever of the year she saw my name i, I mean she didn't know who i was mm -hmm. but she said it was something that resonated when she saw that name wow when she saw pictures something resonated like yeah like, kind of looks familiar yeah like that it kind of clicks where like your gut feeling of something is like something right right so when she was talking about um Turk being her teacher. I was like, <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> Andrew Brown. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, so you have literally been a, a, a rock toss away from me yeah. for years wow. and never knew. Yeah. And never knew. So, like, her mom was saying that yeah, one of the parades, when she saw me, she knew right away. She says, really? because one, you guys look alike. <laughs> she says, but I couldn't say anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's yeah. like, I couldn't say anything to you. Yeah. She says, I would come to football games just hoping. Yeah. And I was just like shocked. I said, but you know what? It wasn't the time. Yeah. You know, everything happen happens in time. Everything has to happen um, in its correct time. Right, right, right. So phenomenal. I told you I was gonna wow you. Like I, yeah, I told you, yeah. you had to cry I know, and laugh. I know, yeah. I know. I was, I was like, I'm ready. I feel, <laughs> I feel like there's some stories that's gonna come on. <laughs> yeah, girl, I got a whole oh lot God. of. God, I love it. I love um, it. So yeah, so she's a part of my life. You know, we don't have that tight mother daughter bond. I I want us to. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, as far as her relationship with her dad, I told her go for it. I just want no parts of it. Yeah. You know, I. I don't hurt over it anymore. I will say that God healed me, but it's still, I still have the scar. The scar yeah. will always be there. The scar will yeah. never, ever go away. Yeah. Um, but we will never be like mommy, daddy, daughter. Like, mm, yeah, no. no, that I just, no. Mm -hmm. um, so she tries to build that, 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 that relationship. They have their thing mm -hmm. and I'm okay with it. You know, mm -hmm. I, that's your child. You know, yeah. No matter how she got it, that's your child. Um, is it difficult? Was it difficult? meeting her bringing her into my home absolutely yeah um in 2000 and well she came in 2010 mm -hmm. so around 2009 mm -hmm. i started writing my book mm. about my life mm. now i didn't do I'm, I'm not writing it um in order autobiography i'm putting it in the story mm -hmm. you know um so it was just kind of crazy how you know, these things are happening, like, all right, the yeah. retreat, the, you know, you get out of your daughter, you find your daughter, you yeah. know, writing the book, you know, all these things just kind of happening um, back to back. Um, you know, she comes, she moves in with us. It was hard because I didn't, I couldn't connect to her, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, all these years, like, I, I don't know who you are. Yeah, you know, I had to get to know her, and it was just again mind boggling. She's telling me these stories about CI and mm -hmm. you know her teachers and her friends and her friends' parents, and I'm like, oh my god, I know these people. Like, yeah. know yeah. these people, know these people. You yeah. know. And did um, you tell the story of what happened with her father to her? Her adoptive parents told her, so she oh, already knew. She knew. Okay. She okay. knew. Um, she knew that I was young. Mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't take away her pain. Yeah. you know that doesn't take away her anger yeah you know um and like i I've, I've explained it to her you yeah. know i what i did that decision that that little girl made was the best decision for you yeah you know i apologize to her you know like if you had a messed up childhood and whatever whatever i would have really screwed you up yeah me raising you you being in my household you and this is not i'm not talking about about my family so when this podcast key ears and you guys hear this i'm not saying you know, i come from a horrible family everyone has this function but however raising her in that environment would have been beyond toxic yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um 
And she understood that, Mm -hmm. you know, it's still as a child, you want your parent, you know, as a child hearing how you were conceived, I can't fathom how she accepted that. Yeah. You know, but that doesn't negate the fact that she's human. She wants her parents. Yeah, you know, she wants that relationship. She wants to know who they are. You know, why? Why am I the way that I am? Who am I? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you have the these history. questions. Yeah, all the history right. behind it. Right, and and when I tell you, it's so wild. You know, as I've gotten to know her over the years, she is she's me. Like people wow. say, me, me. Yeah, she's me. Wow. she's me. Um, I'll have to send you pictures because, like, yeah, you I, yeah. literally, mm-hmm. like, look identical. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so you know, she's an adult now. She's got a kid. You know we're all um living life yeah um she moved down to with you to houston i'm trying to get her to leave long island city and come to houston okay. like get out of long island city like yeah you know, come on leave yeah. new york it's so much better um but that would be my advice to a lot of people um mm-hmm. to try something new mm-hmm. you know move out i see that you're doing like products and like being creative so did that creativity uh come about um now recently in your new life or you've always done those things and what business is nope. you doing now mm-hmm. so the creative part came out of being traumatized mm-hmm. having something to get the energy out like i said you know um i actually started getting into uh crafting at the rec center i don't remember where it wasn't yet but at the rec center um then uh our favorite art teacher is baglio mm-hmm. you know really brought so much out of me where I was able to get some of those inner things out through art yeah you know um I, I talked about the music department that was my thing oh Mr. Parisi love that man to death he does not know what being a part of that that drama club and doing theater mm-hmm. helped me so 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 much yeah. because again I have all this stuff inside that I can't get out yeah here was a way I'm already learning how to pretend and wear the mask, but doing theater like helped me to not just hide, but I could be whoever I wanted to be. And you know, those couple of moments on yeah, Mm -hmm. those couple of moments on stage, I wasn't Charmonique. I was what was the first play I did? I think West Side Story was the first play that I did with Mm -hmm. him. Um, I'm a dancer in West Side Story. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it just art itself and i forget your 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 motto but art itself oh the art of living i see art never yes yes there you go Mm -hmm. so the art of living through theater through music through being creative helped me to live Mm -hmm. the life that that i wanted to i love it the right the life that i didn't have to wear the mask on Mm -hmm. people can see my creativity i can be creative and be comfortable in it still hiding whatever yeah. Um, so that that like I I owe homage to them, you know, to Miss Armstrong, um, for all of the things that they did, that they knew that they didn't didn't know. Yeah, the that's what I always I love to ask like is. who some of your like favorite teachers are that really impacted mm-hmm. you or heroes that yeah. you've had. Yeah, Mr. Police was definitely one of them. Miss Armstrong, even as strict and as mean as she wanted to be, I got to see the softer softer side of her. Um. And I'm, I'm very, I'm grateful for it. I don't know if you were in CI when we had the security guard, cat lady. I was in the bathroom crying one day. Mm-hmm. And she's mean lady, mean lady. <laughs> and um, she's like, go to class. Mm-hmm. I can't go to class. <laughs> just crying, crying, crying. I remember like, putting tissue underneath the thing. I wiped my eyes and I finally stopped. She's like, so you're going to go to class now? Like, hmm, I guess I she stopped go. and she says, you know, life gets better mm. and I like that's the first time I think I ever looked at her as a person and not cat yeah. lady yeah. it gets better you just got to go through it yeah and it does and, and yeah. I mean it really really does you have to um you have to go through it you know I, I'm grateful for having those creative outlets um to get that stuff out like I said journaling like I will journal on the subway six o'clock in the morning holding a pole with my arm and writing with the other one you know Mm-hmm. Because it was, it's just, it's so much, but it's, it's, um, it was my way of getting out, mm-hmm. you know, getting things inside out because, you know, when we hold stuff in, it becomes cancerous. Yes. You know, I didn't want to be yes. that, that, that time bomb. I didn't want to be that ticking bomb. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, and I didn't care if people read my journal or not, 
preferably, you know, not, but you know, like I said, my brothers used to read, so they knew mm -hmm. certain things, but again, it just wasn't addressed. Yeah. You know, people say, um, I'll never raise my kids the way that I was raised. The one thing that I said, one thing that I did in, re in hindsight to that was, I said, I would never raise my kids the way that I was raised. My kids and I have communication. Mm -hmm. This open line of communication. My daughter was going through her pubescent stage and, mm -hmm. you know, that weird stage they go through. If there's anything you ever want to tell me mm -hmm. and you feel you can't tell me, send me a text message, yep. send me an email, or write me a note. I mean, I tell you, Linda, in the middle of the night, you hear little papers crumbling underneath my bedroom door. Aww. Then we sit. I sit by the door and we pass notes back and forth. Oh, that's that door. beautiful. And I love that because even now as an adult, mm -hmm. we can talk about everything, anything under the sun. Yeah. I never hid from them that they had a sister. Mm -hmm. I never hid from them how she was conceived. Yeah. Then when she walked through that door, it mm -hmm. was like, oh my God, like, mommy really wasn't lying. Like, I really do have a bigger sister. Yeah, yeah. You know, for all yeah. of us, a transition, mm -hmm. you know, because we all needed to know who she was. You know, yeah. you're 22 years old. Yeah. Like, we don't know who you are. It yeah, was, everyone, it was, everyone's got to heal from this. It's like, it's like a healing thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's, it's been a process. It has absolutely wow. been a process. You know, again, I'm very thankful to God that I'm not who people said that I would be. Yeah. You know, like you hear family members behind closed doors saying stuff and you're like, yeah, that's traumatic. And that, I could have allowed those things to form me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a crack hurt. I've never danced on a pole before. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sitting in a corner, you know, with an itch. Uh, you know, I don't have a psychopath or any of those things. You know, and like I said, I owe that all to God because I, I heard the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, all of my life, I've never felt that I fit in. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe in my 20s, I was like, I don't even care what I fit in or not. You know, like, whatever, I'm living my life. You know, yeah. if I don't fit in the circle, I don't fit in the circle. But even without fitting in or finding where maybe I should be, mm -hmm. my life is never affected by it. Yeah. You know, like I said, I have friends from all around. You know, I'm a, I think I'm a well-rounded person, mm -hmm. despite, you know, everything else. Yeah, um, it's so a lot. about it's a lot and I really, really am so happy and proud of you because really we've been through like a lot where I'm so proud of you that we can both come out of this and not be that statistic where mm -hmm. we are on the polls or we're drug addicts, alcoholics and all of this. So we really escaped that and we could have been mm -hmm. just another you know, oh, she had a bad childhood and this is what happened to her. Like all the right. rumors and all the voices that people are saying that they think that this is what's going to happen to you. So mm -hmm. we divide all of that. Right. So that is our, that's our superpower. Mm -hmm. so I want to commend you and thank you. And I'm super proud of you. Same all to you. all you have done. You. So that is how the creative part came out of me. Um, I've always been creative, but then, you know, you have kids and you, you, you put those things on the back burner. Yeah. Um, um, I've always wanted to open my own restaurant. So that's why I went to school for restaurant management and I've been mm -hmm. in and out of the restaurant industry for years. That is still something that I, I would like to do or that will be done. Mm -hmm. um, and what it is about the restaurant industry that I love is the instant gratification. And maybe that's a, a selfish thing. But when you serve someone, a meal, hey, you you lived in a restaurant. When yeah. you give someone good food, you know if it was good or not. And you, you want get that, that reaction. You want their, you it, want right. their reaction. That's how I do, like when I do a painting, a custom piece for someone, I want to be there when they see it and I unveil right. it. Like I want to get that reaction. Right. And right. I, I, I don't know if that is because of my childhood, I didn't get that, that those reactions. I didn't yeah. get the round of applause. Mm -hmm. I mean, despite all of the great things that I did and all of the awards that I did and the concerts that I was in, my dad was never in the audience. Mm. You know, um, I went to modeling school and I remember my mom had chemo the day before. Mm -hmm. She came to my graduation. Wow. You know, and I remember walking down the runway and seeing her and just the look on her face. Mm -hmm. Like that is my fondest memory of my mom. Yeah. You know, because I, I don't have cancer, but you know, like my best friend has cancer. She tells me how it feels after the chemo. I remember my mom telling stories after the chemo, but you showed up for me. Yeah. Like, despite however bad you felt that day, yeah. you showed up for me. Yeah. You know, and that, again, I hold that near because my dad wasn't there yeah. my whole life. You know, I, I, I talked about 
again, coming from a two parents, parents list home. Even when he remarried, they were never around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't around half the time either, but I had it planned. I knew, okay, they'll be back around this time. So come in like five minutes before or come in after and then just go to your room. And yeah. I was always in my room. Yeah. So, you know, they were in a way to hide. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where the creative part came from. You know, I went to use Dan a million summers, um, you know, that music camp. Um, uh, one of the things that I've learned maybe about five years ago mm -hmm. is I need to stop allowing people to form my behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I say that because, you know, I had a, a scholarship to go to a music school mm -hmm. and it was like, oh no, that's, no, no, that's not for you. So I didn't go to college until years later, mm -hmm. you know, because I've, I, I allowed the influential people to influence my passions and my desires. Mm -hmm. So they've been bottomed out. Um, I started catering, you know, my kid's father was like, no, you shouldn't do that. And so I stopped, mm. you know, when I came to Houston, that was my, okay, all the chords are cut. I'm not connected to the naysayers. Yeah. Um, I started doing royalty treats, doing party favors and, you know, little um, treats, you know, yeah. cupcakes and, you know, candy apples, those type of things. And that scenario happened. I allowed someone to push my passion out. And I'm not giving them total 100% because then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, COVID people really weren't buying, but I still had a bunch of, you know, returned customers. Yeah. But I stopped because of that person. Yeah. Um, oh. So will I go back to doing World of Cheese? Probably because I, I love it. I love being creative. Mm -hmm. you know, in any way, you know, Naomi's legacy, Na I'm so sorry, Naomi is my mom's middle name. So that's Naomi's legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my mom comes from her, like I said, she's from the Caribbean. My grandfather owns a restaurant yeah. um, in St. Thomas. He was a cop in St. Thomas. He was a carpenter. So I see where I get those yeah, creative all things that, from. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, my mom loved to sew and to decorate. Like she painted our bath tub red like who has a red bath <laughs> i love that where did you get all your fieriness from then your mom right absolutely uh, my the way that i dress absolutely is mm -hmm. definitely um you know from my mom and all of my kids are creative which is phenomenal because they each have their niche yeah. you know um and, and it, it's great to see that how that's manifesting from generation to um to generation mm -hmm. um my full-time job i still work for a um recruitment company i do consultant care i manage consultants all around the world mm -hmm. um remotely yeah i do it from home like mm -hmm. i said i was in and out of the restaurant industry for years and i was a manager for a chain restaurant for a very long time and that whole racist thing mm -hmm. my regional manager was all on board for it but the people underneath him and the particular lady that was training him, like this is horrible and i got tired of hitting the wall mm -hmm. you know i'm only going to ask to help but so many times and yeah. first of all, it's hard for me to ask for help. Yeah. So the fact that I'm asking you is making me humble myself. Mm -hmm. And then you keep disregarding me. And I'm telling her how I feel. I'm telling him what's going on. And you guys are just like, ah, you'll be fine. You know, strong people sometimes, when we have our moment of weakness, we really need you to believe in that weakness. Yeah. Like, we're not faking. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm yeah. asking for help. Like, usually I'm, usually I'm it's when strong people ask for help. We've already hit the bottom line and below it at that point. So we're right. We're below empty. Like that's it. Like we need SOS at this moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so one of those bad days where I was just like frustrated, I got a call from a lady I used to work with and she's like, I'm sorry to mock her. Hey, Sean, how are you? You're on my mind. And I have a great opportunity. I don't know what you're doing in life. I know you're in Houston. Um, but let's talk, you know? So we have a conversation. She tells me about this position and I'm like, okay, fine. And she goes, just like that? I'm like, yeah, just like that, fine. She said, you're just gonna leave it? I'm just gonna leave my job. And it's not that, again, the passion is not there. This is when I began to realize that I keep allowing people to pull me out of my passion. Mm -hmm. But I will, I will open a restaurant eventually, you know, because yeah. I just enjoy doing it. I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy cooking. I enjoy gathering. You know, who in high school had, um, Friend, what do you call it? Friendsgiving? 
I had friends come over and I would cook for friends. Oh my god! Like, my ha- my my house is a spot to build. Yeah. And after school, I'm gonna Charmaine's gonna cook. She's gonna cook something. Wow. You know. Mm-hmm. So I've been I've been entertaining um, for years, um, and I don't know if that entertaining again is a cover up. Mm. You know, but it is what it is. It yeah. it made me who I am. Yeah. Have I've, you seen therapy through the years to process? I did all of this? until. Yep, I did until um, my insurance changed and, mm-hmm. you know, they weren't covering it. Now, you know, you get mental health coverage from anywhere, but yeah, not to say that I don't need it because I'm sure there's things in there. Like um, I was saying before, when I started writing my book, I had to stop because it was hurting mm. because it not, not just the hurt, it was bringing up things that I didn't remember happening, mm. you know, where it's yeah. like, well, wait a second, did that really happen? Yeah. Or is this just a figment of my imagination yeah. so it, it I will finish it but it's just it's a process it's a um, lot so, and, it's a, and it's a lot of years so like I've, mm-hmm. I've also talked to other people on the podcast where I, I want to write my book but I might I might write it in the form of like an art and then have mm-hmm. like little poetry and essays and little fragments because that's how my memory is as well right because I have pieces of memory and so maybe I'll just collage it all together into art and words. So then it's not as daunting as writing mm-hmm. just all words. Cause that's not who I am. Like I'm, I love, right. I love art. So like I have to right. put who I am into it. Absolutely. And that's a phenomenal idea. You know, you're telling your story through art. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm, that's like a playwright. You know, they tell their story through their plays. Yeah, exactly. You know, a person who writes music tells their life, you know, via yeah. music. Yeah. Cause it was, it was really hard. Cause when I was thinking like, I want to write my book, but I'm like, it just, it, I just kept stopping and stopping. And I think I was talking to someone on a podcast where I saw this coach on Instagram and I just mm-hmm. resonated with like a reel that she had and mm-hmm. DM'd her and said, I would love to have you on. And I was like, when are you going to have, you know, like, do you have a book out? Like, tell me about your book. And she's like, I don't have a book. I'm like, uh, wow. Like your words honestly are poetic. So even if you don't have a book, you you can even just you know, dictate it into your phone. And then that's how you start your book is by your words because just her eloquence and vocabulary, mm-hmm. just, it was like poetic to me. So I'm like, you have right. to do something. It, you'll do it. And I think that the, that platform is you're doing it in an art way, your way is you telling your story. Yeah. You know, for me, I love to tell stories. You know, like I said, I love to journal. Um, I will finish it. Um, maybe I do need counseling to help finish it because- it's going to cause me to dig deep. And my daughter and I have talked about it. And I last year I reached out to someone. My aunt has you know a couple of books written and she introduced me to someone who's gonna help me ghostwrite it. Mm. Um but it's it wasn't it's just it's yeah. not the same. Yeah. You know, even even though I'm not doing it in in the form of an autobiography, it's just it's not the same. It's yeah. not me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um so I'll put this out there and whenever this podcast hits. You know, maybe 10 years down the line, someone will watch. I'm like, oh my God, I remember saying that. So my daughter and I are going to do a book together. Oh, I and love And remember it. when we were little, you had the books that had two stories. You read yes. it one way and you went, oh, oh that's how a book is going to be. And the middle I love it. Is us I just got chills. So you have to do it soon. <laughs> you have to do it soon. So that, that has to be the oh. first one that you guys do. Because it'll be so healing yeah. for the two of you. Yeah. And that that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's you know, one of the reasons why I want her to come to Houston, because it will be just us. You know, yeah. she came into my life when life was not necessarily crazy, but we already had our, our, how do you say, our lives. We were already yeah. doing things. Yeah. And, and, and since you're um, empty nester now, if she comes, it'll just be the two of you healing. Exactly. 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 And I think that that is absolutely what we need. Oh my Absolutely God. What we need. I love it. Now, do you have any um, advice for like relationships and red flags and boundaries that you've learned through the years? Because if you didn't have um, a good relationship with your father being supportive and then all of this trauma, how does that affect you as an adult now? It affects me as an adult. And again, being an empty nester, this is when things, I actually been able to see things like the mind just came off. I can hear, I can see. Um, the relationship that I had with my dad, I realized through life, I was always trying to do things to impress people, mm-hmm. whether it's male or female. Mm-hmm. I wanted your attention. I wanted your undivided attention. Mm-hmm. Do I have to stand on my head? Do I have to, you know, whatever to get your attention? Mm-hmm. Um, in relationships, I always would say, I don't want to date my dad. Mm-hmm. And anytime any man has ever 
portrayed anything that reminded me of my dad. Like, no, can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's not, you know, I'm not saying that my dad is a horrible person. You know, this man took in another woman's kids and raised them. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad will take on strays, you know, Um, just our relationship is not what I I wanted. And we all have our own expectations. I'm sure my kids expect expectations of me are totally different from what they got. Um, But when it comes to your childhood and how that carries on to adulthood, we don't know how that transition works. There's no book because everyone is different. There's no, you know, follow this plan and it's going to work out for you. You have to, as you grow through life and mature, you have to figure out what to throw away and what to keep. So now, you know, approaching that 50 mark, you know, I realize what I want in a man and I'm not going to settle. And it's, not um my dad was a, a great provider mm-hmm. you know so what i've learned especially my failed relationships is that i expect you to provide yeah like we love to eat your pain like i will happen to have sometimes i'll pay sometimes but 90 percent of the time you should be paying mm-hmm. moving here to houston was the first time i ever had a man say well you wanted to go here so you should pay oh what? Oh. <laughs> hold on wait <laughs> I, i've never heard that before like yeah you're kind of telling me no but um, again, that was just something that I learned is a Southern thing, but anyway, mm-hmm. so my, my, my advice to anyone in a relationship, seeking a relationship, seeking marriage, mm-hmm. when they say marry your best friend, mm-hmm. there's a lot of truth to it. Ask anyone who's been married for a long period of time. They'll say, I married my best friend. The, the challenge in this society is no bottom. Let me rephrase that. Not everyone is authentic Mm -hmm. everyone has a game plan yep there's they're up to something yep so being able to filter through people Mm -hmm. take your time to date take your time to settle down to get married like just take your time Mm -hmm. yes you're gonna have to have failed relationships in order to know what you want but don't rush into everything um so quickly now i have had great relationships like i i can't say that i've had oh oh my god a horrible relationship you know i've dated a narcissist which helped me see my toxicity because you know a narcissist they're so toxic yeah but it helped me see where my flaws were and what i needed to change about me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know so everyone that you encounter there's a learning that you get from them yeah you know um just take take your time you know just and be be um what's the word persistent in what you want don't settle absolutely don't settle if you say i want to do with with this this and this and it's not a materialistic thing and it's not something that w- will change like you have to have a fit body you ain't gonna be fit in 10 years yeah you know be realistic and don't settle don't yeah. settle um it. as far as like i think one of the things to talk about was finances you know growing up yes we had a lot of things but our parents never taught us how to be financially savvy, how to save, how to invest, how to budget. Um, right. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine who, you know, we grew up together. You know, my dad was her pastor, you know, through church or whatever. Both of our parents had these beautiful homes, mm-hmm. greatly decorated and everything. Mm-hmm. They didn't teach just about home ownership. So here we now trying to figure out like, how do I buy a home? What do I have to do? Because these conversations weren't had, yeah. you know, again, with my kids, we talk about every, anything under the sun. If I find out something new, I'm going to call them like, hey, did you know? Yeah. And it's vice versa. You know, I, I love that communication. And that is the one thing, one advice I always give people, communicate. Yeah. Learn how to communicate. And mm-hmm. communicating is not always text message. You've got to pick up the phone and actually talk to people. Mm-hmm. Research, ask questions. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't know what you know until you don't know it. And it's better to know something and not need to know it. That's it, right? Yeah, it's better to know something than need to know it and not know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I'm think not that sure. I'm not sure, but I think I know what you're talking. <laughs> so it's like I may not need to know how to drive. I don't need to know how to drive the car now, but I already know how to do it just in case I need to. Perfect yeah. example: We went. Uh, one of my girlfriends and I were going away for the weekend. She had a six shift car. Mm-hmm. I have always been a designated driver. Mm-hmm. I'm not driving your car because I don't know how to drive six. She was so adamant about being able to go out and drink. We sat in Green Acres parking lot, and she taught me how to drive a six shift. <laughs> Because she's like, 
I'm going to drink and you're going to drive my car. So let me teach you how to drive. You're like, all right, let's figure it out. Exactly. Let's figure it out. Exactly. Exactly. I ended up not having to drive her car, but I know how to drive a stick shift. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think the purpose of life is? The purpose of life. Everyone has their own individual purpose, Mm -hmm. but all of our purposes are intertwined. We need each other. You and I needed to have this conversation. There's someone that's going to watch this, that's going to need to hear something that I said or something that you said. Um, our purpose is not a, a one, no, that's not the right way to say it. Um, again, everyone's purpose, we're connected. It's just a matter of making the right connection, mm-hmm. putting the right pieces of Legos together to build something better. What's the best lesson that took you the longest to learn? Relationships. It, like, seriously, it was just a couple of years ago that I realized the impact the relationship I had with my dad had in my relationships mm-hmm. as an adult. Like, it, and it was one of those, like, ah, oh, moment. Like, yeah, the aha moment. I love that. Yeah, like, you're, you're only 48 just now having that aha moment. But that, that was the one thing. And that's why now this is what I need, not what I want. And if you can give me the things that I need, the things that I want will just come. Yeah, yeah. You know, but this is, I have to stick to what I need and stop trying to accommodate other people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I live my life for my kids. I sacrifice things for my kids. And those are the things that I should have done because I am their parent. But I realized in so many other areas, I was always willing to sacrifice myself yes. for the sake of others. Yeah, no yes. more. Yes. Nope, done. Sorry. Yeah, like that's what I've done my entire life. So I'm 46 now. So maybe two, two more years, I get to where you are, where I'm like, no, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah not I mean no, no you can start now you don't have, you don't have to wait you know I I'm, think it just, I'm still it just, going through the process gotcha mm-hmm. I think for me it took the being alone mm. so now I can take my blinders off you know I can yeah. take the earplugs out and actually see and actually hear you know a lot of times we're in situations and we think that we know everything but it's not until we step out and look mm-hmm. back like oh hmm yeah, yeah, so I think that that's where I am now in life where yeah. I can really live and see and hear. What advice would you give your younger self? Wow. Um, first thing would be um, don't live in a way that you have to say, I wish I did that. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Don't walk in anyone else's shadow. Make your own lane. Um, don't be afraid to speak up about however you feel and don't let others dictate how you feel. Your feelings are validated and you don't need someone else to validate them for you. What you feel is what you feel. People cannot feel for you. You have to feel that and be able to connect with it, accept it, and communicate it. Yeah. Um, and like another aspect, save money, learn how to invest. Mm-hmm. You know, they say, you know, money rules the world. It kind of does because you can't get much without it. So learn how to handle money. Mm-hmm. You know, um, one thing that I'm learning and it was not necessarily an aha moment. Um, I was talking to a friend and she's like, you know, I don't want to buy a house. And I said, well, why not? And like, you got five kids. You don't want a home for them, you know, a place for them to go to. She says, no, I'm going to go buy a shopping center. Oh, I'm like, huh? I said, yeah, I, I don't understand. She says, so if I spend $500,000 on a house, I can take that same $500,000 and buy a shopping center and break it down and have like 10 shops in each shopping center. And I'm making money off of those 10 shops. So then I can buy my kids their own houses. I was like, wow, I oh, never ever thought I, about that. I love that. I love it. That, I said, man, listen, I needed you in my life years yeah. ago. Yeah, shopping um, center. For real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't buy the house, get the shopping center. The get house the shopping later. center. Yeah. I mean, like that's like I tell I teach my kids, I'm like, listen, make sure you save your money. The first thing you're gonna need when you get older, you need a car, you know, you need to budget. Um, you need to invest in real estate, you need to invest in stocks. So, like I put some of their like piggy bank money into like mm-hmm. crypto and stocks. So, like I let them know, like, oh, stocks are down, but it's gonna go up. Like you just gotta keep your money in it, don't like stress out. So try to teach them some of those yeah. now last yeah life questions. life skills yeah a couple a couple of last questions what's uh what's all mm-hmm. things on your bucket list that you want to do now that you're an empty nester um 
I would say travel, but I've traveled my whole entire life, but I still want to continue to travel. Maybe we'll do things more abroad. Um, the restaurant is definitely on my bucket list. Um, the book about my life. And then I have a, another concept. I'm not going to share that one because I'm afraid if I say it, someone's going to grab it. Okay. Um, so I have another book that I, that oh, you'll um, come I back on when that on. happens and we'll tell. Yeah. Her. When that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cause it's, it's going to be good. Um, so to write those two books, mm-hmm. um, like I said, I, I want, I want to purchase a home so that my grandkids have a place to come. Um, or a I shopping want that. center. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, buy properties. I don't know. Um, and just live, you know, I am at the, they say my forever home. So I want my forever home and my forever person. Mm. I, I want that like that person is on my bucket list yeah you know I kind of think I know who that person is and he's just running from me yeah but, um, <laughs> he's just running from you I mean isn't that always the case <laughs> yeah yeah like you I think know he knows you it are, too why are you running like right 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 so I'll make sure that you know if you put this part on I'm going to edit this part and send him just that clip yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. joking <laughs> I love it that's hysterical I love it I love it <laughs> but it's been a pleasure anything else you want to let the uh people know of uh any other advices and tips and tricks or um, I, I just be who you are. And if you don't know who you are, find somebody that you want to be and commit to it. Stick, mm-hmm. stick, stick to that. You know, um, it's okay to talk, you know, it, it, it's okay to have someone that you can confide in. Um, you know, I don't know. There's, I don't know. I've come across people who feel like they shouldn't share knowledge. No, share. Yeah. But you know, somebody, somebody may need that. Yeah. You know, you, you never, you never know. Just, mm-hmm. I don't know, just live. Just yes. Just live. live. I mean, that's, that's the hardest thing for a lot of people to do is just to live and be authentically themselves and stop hiding these secrets that you're holding on to because those secrets can hurt people and it's hurting you and it becomes cancer right. in your body as well. Makes yep, you physically absolutely. sick and turns into emotional cancer. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's live it's all about it. And I am so thankful that you came on Thank to you. share your story and to be vulnerable because every story helps and every story heals. It's the art of living. So I appreciate you yep. so much. I appreciate you so much. Thank you As so much. Thank you so much. Day. You too. Bye. Bye.